Well, uh, here we are on February the 4th, 2023, uh, in beautiful downtown Evanston, and this is the Chicago TI User Group, and it's our um, February meeting, 2023. Um, before I begin, I'd like to pass along some sad news um, to those who may not have heard it already. A couple of days ago, um, Barry Harmson's sister, Goella, called to tell me that he had passed away and um, he was cremated yesterday um, in, um, in the Netherlands and uh, will be sorely missed. We're planning on dedicating the uh, 2023 fair, which is gonna be held this October 14th here in uh, Evanston, uh, to, uh, to Barry. Um, he was a constant visitor here and uh, over many years, and he truly was what made the Chicago TI International World Fair international. Um, well, uh, on with the show. Uh, as they say, the show must go on. So uh, here we are. Um, we have a um, uh, uh, good show lined up, I think, today. Um, and uh, some of the uh, programs, I believe, are going to be programs that uh, that Barry uh, brought and uh, shared with us uh, from Europe. Um, we, uh, Jim Mazurk, our uh, technical guru, is sitting over to my right, and to my left is our club uh, president and the fellow that makes all the magic happen here, uh, Vic Stirrup. And uh, as usual, I'm Hal Shanfield, fair chairman and uh, general dog's body. But before we, uh, before I say, uh, I do, I want to just hold up a quick picture from the Dutch newsletter. There's a picture of Barry. And uh, and we won't be seeing him any longer. Uh, what a shame. Well, Vic, what, uh, what have you got for us today? Well, what I did is I went through my archives and I dug out uh, European floppy disk from uh, TI Club Error Free in uh, hell, I cannot pronounce that bottom word, if you could say that, what the hell? Uh, uh, group. Uh, it's, uh, it's in my, in my imitation of Dutch. Uh, it, uh, it means user group mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in Dutch. And uh, I'm gonna hand it back to you away okay. from the uh, screen. I don't know yes, about the... Very rare Magnetism. floppy disk. Um, I've copied that over to my compact flash uh, nano PV, so we'll be going through that. And then we have several of the, uh, this is the uh, September 2007 newsletter, uh, back to October 2002. Two thousand six, two thousand six, and two thousand five. Their twentieth TI Treffen. So two thousand twenty-three. That would be. Uh, and inside, they had a uh, list of the guilty parties, invitation to the Treff. several columns, programs. Uh, yeah, these little newsletters are uh, a lot of fun. Once upon a time, we had a nice news newsletter as well. Uh, unfortunately, that has fallen by the wayside, uh, as has our membership somewhat. Uh, we used to have, uh, I used to send out 721 of our newsletters, um, and uh, we don't do that any longer. Uh, this would be a good time for me to make a pitch. I got a real nice scanner, and I would appreciate it if people would contact me or the club about whatever physical newsletters uh, from the Chicago User Group they have. We, we have so, a question if any of the newsletters are available online. Well, you're reading my mind, and you're about two sentences ahead. Ah, uh, I have a real nice scanner. I can scan these new letters. 
It, uh, scanner has optical character recognition, so it's a PDF that could be searchable. So this is a big deal for me. I'd love to get these newsletters posted online uh, at the uh, Chicago User Group uh, website that you had uh, mentioned. So let me... Yeah. Well, so I have a complete collection going back to uh, number one. Uh, and I have duplicates uh, of a lot of groups because I inherited the um, Windy, Windy City 99 users group collection okay. of stuff. So we'll, we'll get extra that. copies of ours and extra copies of other people's. Yeah, we'll get that done. Uh, and um, many of the articles, of course, are from other newsletters, so there will be some duplication. Uh, originally, I gave uh, to Tony Zlotyzynski, I gave him a whole stack of newsletters from other um, uh, user groups, and he was in the process, I think, of scanning those and putting those up uh, when he passed away. So, um, another one of the fallen. I never got the newsletters back, by the way. It's always a hazard. I don't think I got them. Uh, when he was still alive, I visited Tony Z a few times. And I got a couple P boxes from him and a couple sets of uh, Chicago Library. Uh, I don't say I ever saw any uh, newsletters. No, oh, well, he may have just scanned them into his own computer and then disposed of them because, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, paper has very little value these days. Um, you know, to a lot of people, a lot of people think that uh, everything should be digital. Right. Well, this is the uh, TI Europe disc that I'm displaying here off the nano. This was from, uh, it doesn't say what year it is for this, but uh, it starts out with back doc and on a program called Bacteria, Bit Reset, BMP, BMP doc, Cell Grow, Character 3. Uh, copy CS, copy CT, uh, DM2K, that was a big deal when T DM2000 came out as a uh, very powerful disk manager that could handle uh, hard drives, SCSI drives, things like that. We'll list some more of this. written by Fred Call from the uh, uh, Dutch in the group. Yes, it is, Hal. As a matter of fact, <coughs> here's the... Uh, Original uh, DM2000 uh, disc, SCSI utilities, and uh, oh, these are on the back side. These were just my test programs and such. Here you go. I met uh, I met Fred uh, at the Paderborn uh, truck a few years ago, and a very nice fellow, um, and um, very very good programmer. So we're going to, uh, we're listing disc number three on the nano. I'm going to step down to boot here. We're going to run that. That's an EA5 uh, file. And uh, the reason I uh, like boot is option uh, number two, display a file. So if we do show directory number one, disc one, uh, go down to, let's go to the first one, back doc is probably the documents for bacteria. So I can type V for view and then press enter and there's the documents for bacteria. Volume one. Now you notice we're in uh, 30 column mode here. So it's a little uh, hard to read. Plus it's in Dutch. No, it's so, in German. Or in German? Mm -hmm. Okay, then we have a fighting chance. <laughs> um, now here at this screen, since I have an F18 running VGA output, I can press W at the home screen for a boot, and we're in 80 column mode. Now when I do display a file, this is how it would print out. Now unfortunately, this is a lot smaller font. And you know, you can do the Ocara 1 trick and try different fonts. Uh, with boot 
and see which font you pr pr uh, prefer the best. Uh, Hal, I can put it back to... Uh, no, it's okay. I, I uh, was just looking at it. I was noticing that the uh, uh, for umlauted letters, for instance, the uh, uh, umlauted uh, O in Schön, um, they're using what seems to be a transliterated... Um, I don't know. I don't know what the name of that is in English. Uh, the the two uh, the, the F the lines. right bracket. No, the uh, it's not a parenthesis. It's like the F. No, no, in Schön, R. about the fourth word in Das Leben oh, kann oh, sein. Uh, the pipe sign. Uh, yeah. Pipe. Yeah. And what is a pipe sign? Pipe sign. Pipe sign. Okay, the pipe sign. Mm -hmm. And then the left. Um, I'm sure the there's right a more more technical term for it. But it's, uh, okay. Uh, well, it's here Unix the, people refer to that as the pipe sign. It's here on the TI uh, keyboard. Uh, function A gives you the pipe sign. Okay, and uh, then uh, in uh, the word for, uh, they use the uh, the right parenthesis uh, for the umlauted U. And let's see. Um, see is that I'm, a parenthesis or is that the... That's a brace. Curly is that brace. a brace? Oh, that's okay. A in 80 columns without my glasses, it's a little well, hard here, to make let, out. Let's uh, go back. That's okay. And here, right. let's see so it again. The, the character set isn't completely translated. Yeah, that's... Th that there, it's easier to see. Is this guy... Yeah, that's a bracket. Shin, yeah, yeah okay. S-C-H pipe N. Shin, shin, shin. That's a S-C-H umlaut at O. Uh, and um, it reads, uh, life can be... Uh, uh, maybe very, should, maybe very difficult. Break, maybe we should break up the language learning titles. Yeah. Uh, and not only for uh, people, uh, also for the uh, uh, the smallest uh, life forms. Uh, uh, bacteria uh, also have their problems um, at any rate. So get one of these if uh, Dutch is not your... Uh, well, this is German. Or right er, German. Okay, yeah. not one of these. So you need a German for, for maximum. Computer. The German version, yeah. Or get yourself, get yourself a more modern computer that you press a button and it translates everything. Yeah, really. Send it all to chat GPT and let yeah. it do the work for you. Yeah. Okay, let's go down a page. Or whatever your favorite flavor uh, of the That's Spiel. Uh, the 10 by 10 raster. Okay, you can pick up a very little out of this. Well, um, it's it appears to be a game of some kind, and uh, without uh, I guess you could run the game and uh, and see what it's all about. But uh, uh, well, it says bacteria is a program. I'll just press. Uh, That's uh, Boot has a hard time uh, picking up final ground cartridges. So we're going to exit this, go back to uh, RxB, uh, period for editor assembler, D for directory, one for drive one. And after a catalogs, We'll go down to bacteria, press the space bar to load a basic or extended basic program. If you press enter, it will load an editor assembler program. Now I get so mixed up on that all the darn time. A lot to learn. Now one of the big things... Oh, I'll come about. On one of our early fairs, was a file compressing program that would make the disk storage space of a file smaller by eliminating all the scrap at the tail end, the last sector used, or something like that. And it was a runtime decompressor was added to the file header when you saved it as a compressed file. The advantage of this was if you had a RAM disk with the limited memory capacity, you could put more programs in storage on it. The disadvantage was it would take like one second longer when you selected the program to uncompress it and run it. 
And uh, nowadays, everybody has so much storage that things like that are a novelty now. But for its time, it was a very welcome program. I always wondered what people would do with that extra second or two or three. Uh, I mean, if you were if you were quick, you could light a cigarette during that time, but uh, you couldn't go and get a cup of coffee. Uh, it's not like the old 300 baud uh, modems where you could read the text as it was coming across the screen, and you could, if you had to, go to the bathroom and still catch yeah. up with the whole screen full. Yeah, career. <laughs> Eh, 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 eh. Yeah, it sounded like elf. <laughs> yeah. So here's a listing of uh, this bacteria. Uh, one REM bacteria version one zero, XB, eighty uh, ZK mouse joystick optional. Oh, okay. I guess you could use the uh, a mouse or a joystick. Uh, here's a clue down in line uh, 145, a, a call link, uh, Moswin. Uh, so there must be uh, embedded assembly in here uh, if they're doing call links. I see you can call a mouse at uh, 170 there. Oh, okay. Well, let's plug in a joystick. <coughs> Excuse me, a wired remote controller. Is that because we don't have a mouse? Uh, no, I didn't pack a mouse this time around. Uh, usually I have a mouse in my bag, but I didn't bring the bag today. Well, I seem to remember the mouse that I have, I had gotten specifically for the uh, YAP painting program with 80 column, the, uh, which stands for yet another paint program. Uh, you had the Asgard mouse, the Myark mouse, make Simic worked on that. Mechatronic mouse. Yeah, ah, okay. I'm using the joystick. I don't know, pressing the fire button doesn't. Without ever read the. Uh... Okay. The instructions, I think we're at somewhat of a disadvantage. <laughs> All right, Hal, you're red. Uh-uh. What am I supposed to uh, do here? Well, what I did, I couldn't get it to do anything by pressing the fire button, but I clicked on my own guy, and the cursor went from a hollow box to the icon of the X guy. Yeah. I so think... possibly if you move that cursor, can you move it? No, yeah. this one does it. Okay, I'm, I'm moving it. Oh, yeah, okay. okay, I thought be a, okay. Press the fire button. Okay, where do you want to put your all right things? on top of yours? Let's let's uh, let's not. Be... I don't know if this is like uh, go. Oh, it won't let me. Oh, wait a minute, maybe I have to do it. Maybe I have to press. They might have to be touching or adjacent. No, I don't. yeah. So that would be like what, Othello or a uh, Chinese game of Go? If anybody knows how to play this game. <laughs> hey, anybody in Europe awake? What are we doing? Oh, you can do it diagonally. Oh wait, I don't have to be right next to it. It's not accepting that. Maybe it'll go down. It accepted that. Oh, you moved it for some reason. Okay, so as usual, I don't know what I'm doing. But this is bacteria. I fear we're not we're doing a, much justice to the program. And we were being asked whether or not this was a real machine. I told him that uh, it's a real TI 994A with an F 18A video interface attached. Yeah, I think that um, I, I think 
probably asking if it's a real, real steel. Uh, yeah. And because um, you might be able to tell, we're pointing it at, at a uh, flat screen VGA display, or pointing the camera at that. But that's sort of the magic of the F18A that it gives. Yeah. Can basically is a hardware re-implementation of the TMS 9918A with some enhancements that uh, output to a VGA style analog output rather than composite color. So you get a little better video quality for your buck. Oh, I captured that piece. And we also got a comment that this game seems to be go like. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Who's so commenting? This All is right. um, a gentleman from the Chicago area by the name of Kerry. Uh, I know him from some of the Linux users group meetings and um, software users group out. meetings, and also I think he is a regular attendee of the uh, TRS 80 color computer group. Uh, events. I know, I know. Well, I'm multi system, so yeah, yes. you've got to take me or leave me I as am. well. I am a true TI loyalist. I shun other systems <laughs> other than the iOS 16 now, point three. Yeah, so you're, part of, you're, either, you're either a TI purist or a cult of Apple. No, I, I, um, I have my. Well, modern Apple. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so this is a lot like the game of Go, or uh, on TI, they got one similar called Othello. All right, so this is bacteria. This is, oh, 1998. Okay, so this is recent. <laughs> recent. Yeah, yes. Late 20th century, yes. Oh, that uh, makes me recent, too, huh? Well, yeah. No, not that recent, but... Oh, I wish I, I, had the, that wish I had the body I had in 1998. Um, I, I uh, still had all my parts. <laughs> Glad I don't. <laughs> yes. Oh, I was so sick. You know, I, I had like colds every week, allergies, the flu, bronchitis. In 1998? Yeah, all the darn time since I was a kid till I finally uh, got Sorry. into a low stress job. Oh. And then that made all the difference in the world. I thought you were going to say uh, acupuncture or uh, you found the Dow. Oh, I just got, by the way, I just got a, uh, I just got a Christmas card uh, dated uh, January 27th from Don Jones. Uh, those who will remember Don Jones, uh, he, he now exists on a slightly higher astral plane <laughs> and um, uh, doesn't use his TI any longer. But, uh, or his Geneve, I guess. Okay, here's one called Bit Reset. Now, if memory serves me correctly, a Myark floppy controller would not, when you initialize the disk with it, it wouldn't initialize correctly. And it would initialize at like, say, 16, uh, sector rather than 18th sector or something like that and what this program did was uh, allowed you to uh, correct the disk without having to reformat it. Oh, let's get back in the caps. And, uh, we have a comment from someone using the nickname JD who comments when he was a kid growing up in Evanston that he used to check out books about the TI-99 foray from the Evanston Library. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. we have someone else, uh, was it if you're some 50, he's like, yeah, somebody in Europe is awake, although I knew nothing, if he says he knows nothing about that game. <laughs> And uh, Kerry also comment, comments he's a lurker as far as the color computer stuff goes. Real, the real TRS-80 is really his meat and potatoes, so to speak. No, that's all right. All right. Um, we forgive him. <laughs> well, here we go. Kudos to Tim Tesh. Uh, this backup bit remover, this program will remove the backup bit placed in byte 12 of the file descriptor record 
by the Meyer HFDC, which causes problems accessing files on Horizon RAM disks and other storage devices. So this is an assembly language. It wouldn't load in extended basic. So F9 to exit, drive one to nine, A to Z, because a lot of people with RAM disks, they just call the drives, you know, drive A, drive B, drive C, to not confuse it with disk one, disk two, disk three. And uh, okay, so that's the backup bit removed. Go to directory, just drive one, GI Europe. So what else do we have? We have BMP, which is a DF80. That's a, what editor assembler. Uh, it sounds seems to be coming from the program itself, as opposed to yeah. Some of that's RF noise from from the uh, video. It sounds like. Well, it stops. Yeah, BMP it stops when, doc. When other programs are. are being yeah, depending uh, upon. Yeah, so you know, what's, what's actually running. It's actually probably uh, radio interference that is being induced by memory access or some other operation on computer. I left my... Uh, it will change depending upon what it's doing. Yeah. Ghost Hunter's EMF detector at home. Uh, yeah, I can hear this coming out of the speaker now. That's a TI uh, speaker noise. Yeah, which is the digital noise basically bleeding over. Yeah. Which I did want to demonstrate one day. I picked up a uh, guitar stomp pedal <laughs> that was a audio threshold limiter where by adjusting the knob it wouldn't listen to anything until it got above a certain volume. So I played with that and yeah you could use it to cut out this uh, annoying uh, TI uh, uh, high pitch noise you get over the. Uh, hmm. uh, over the uh, uh, sound system on the TI. We're going to go down here to BMP dock. Notice how there's no wind now. DV80, do a V to view, press enter. BMP converter. Where's it? Where's it? Where's it? Where's it? Where's it? GIF format, PMP. Oh, this might be a graphics converter to convert from, uh, it says uh, GIF format. Wait a minute, it says uh, whoever these days uh, is you, is uh, working with a uh, uh, picture. Um, after. Remember what the what the uh, umlaut and letter is. This is a different one. Uh, the chef is uh, so this would be an umlauted A, I guess. PC All right. So uh, if you're if you're working um, with a um, um, picture, uh, or like a. Uh, um, format. Oh, uh, so this will con convert uh, a, um, <laughs> as the title says, it converts a BMP format. Now, um, if someone knows what a BMP is. Windows bitmap. Is that a bitmap? Yeah. Or bitmap? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, okay, should uh, I go to the next page? So, no, it's, it's, uh, unless of course there's, unless unless of course there's something else. Format, format, uh, if you want to convert PC that format. into the TI format. Right. Uh, unless you, there's something else in the TI realm that used that extension. Yeah. I don't know. There's no format. It has to be, if you want to use it in a TI format, you have to bring it into a, into a format that uh, is readable um, by the TI. Uh, I remember when GIF Mania came out, it had, uh, yeah. I think it could import yeah. different formats. Or is that RLE Plus? 
Um, you could import pictures and export them in different formats. Dominion would, would uh, convert. Uh, okay, so yeah, you can um, you have the opportunity uh, to convert into a GIF format. Uh, the the formerly uh, only PC format uh, that the uh, TI um, controlled, and then the next page is Zerbringen. Handicaps. Oh, now there's a couple of problems. It has a couple of handicaps. Uh, the first one is uh, for the, uh, the first one is uh, what is it? Two uh, GIF eighty seven and GIF yeah, eighty nine. Yeah, there's two GIF formats apparently. Uh, okay, you can. Apparently, only use this with uh, 80 columns. To my skill, I'm an artist building an approximate. If you want to bring it into TI Artist, there are three different programs uh, that uh, also have um, you shouldn't. Says that there are three uh, other programs that um, will apparently do this conversion, but um, it's um, it's it's easier. Uh, okay, I put some for bitmap. BMP is also an abbreviation for bitmap uh, by. Um, you know, uh, uh, exactor on uh, the next page. Uh, you know, that's for the PC. Um, the English, uh, there are also programs that uh, work for the PC. Yeah, we we'll like the TI. Uh, in the. Uh, in uh, the build data, in the picture data, uh, there are single uh, points uh, <coughs> that um, represent other other bits. Uh, and the on pixel and what else is uh, 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 tells a, there's there's information that tells whether the pixel is on or off. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, which color it has uh, <laughs> with the verb at the end of the sentence. I've got to read the whole damn sentence before I can figure out what it says. Um, okay, so it, uh, the, these... Uh, Just paraphrase these, it. Yeah, these, these individual uh, points will uh, comprise more than one bit of information. It will tell a pixel whether it's on, whether it's off, what color it has, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, da, 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 da. But there's no intensity level in a TI. Um, it's either on or off, or it's one of the colors. Yeah. Um, some of the abbreviations, I, I do not know. Uh, it's a uh, compromise. Well, let's just go through this then. Yeah, at any rate, it goes on and on and on. It's uh, a uh, good feed uh, 480 by 792 pixel size. Uh, oh, Page Pro 99 uh, pictures. Let's see what else we can read. Uh, 80 uh, 80 column cart. Yeah. If you um, uh, if you have uh, pictures that are uh, designed for the the PC, this will I believe convert them into a uh, GIF format, which then can be read by a TI, mm -hmm. uh, or by a TI wrote program, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's, a, that's a kind of a nice thing. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have uh, a lot of, there's probably a lot more stuff for the PC than there is for the TI, so uh, this is a program that would allow those um, uh, pictures uh, to be used in, in uh, 
in the TI format. So this is also written by Wolfgang Betch. And There's and, uh, his phone number. Yeah. So we could call him up and uh, <laughs> ask him for uh, help on uh, translating this for us. He came to one of the fairs. I took him down to a, a computer show down at um, Navy Pier, I believe it was. And um, we also, Barry and I, took him to his church, uh, which is located out on, um, uh, right off of, um, uh, uh, not D Road, is it? Uh, maybe it's D Road. Um, or just, uh, just past D Road on the way to the airport. And uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of his church uh, service, uh, the members of his um, congregation, well, a big congregation that he had attended, invited us to uh, have lunch with them. And uh, they were all dressed as people used to dress uh, in this country, uh, properly to go to church, whereas we were in our our jeans and, and uh, sweatshirts mm -hmm. and uh, didn't quite. Um, appeared to be part of the crowd, but they were very, very, very nice to us, oh. and uh, uh, very nice uh, group. Originally descended from uh, German uh, German immigrants, they had decided, I've forgotten the actual name of the church, but they had originally decided that there were room in heaven for only 144,000 people, and uh, when their membership grew over the years, they then uh -oh. had to uh, realize that uh, that meant that nobody else that joined the church would then ever be able to get to heaven. So they, they realized that they made a mistake uh, in that original translation, that it was actually more than, than, than that. It was uh, 144 million or 144 billion. They weren't quite sure. But uh, not, to make, not to make any fun of anyone's religion, but um, very nice people, very, very nice people. Okay, so what I did here is I cataloged the disc for BMP in uh, uh, RXB, and I pressed enter, and since it uh, is not an auto start, I had to go through the uh, list of uh, start program names, and of course I found the one called start, and that's it, and then I got this screen. So we can load a BMP file, we can view the picture, save it as a TA artist picture, or as a page pro 99, or quit. Uh, so you have a disk drive there, you have a subdirectory. Remember that was a big deal? Mm -hmm. If you had a 1.44 uh, hard shell floppy disk, the, uh, the three and a half inch ones, uh, you could have three subdirectories on that disk with like the MyArk HFDC or the SCSI drive or something like that. And uh, the, everything didn't have to be in the blue. Four, okay. four subdirectories, what a luxury. Oh. Four subdirectories, yeah. what a luxury. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't have a disk uh, that I know of that has BMP files on it. Uh, and it looks like this will not catalog them. Uh, you have to know what disk drive you're looking at and what the file name is uh, actually itself. It might catalog it if you knew what what drive you wanted to catalog. Um, okay, I just pressed D for drive for disk one, and there's no such file by that name. Hmm. It'd be keen if they had a BMP file on here. Let's quit. Do a directory. Uh, go to period, editor assembler, D for directory one. We'll catalog this. Hmm. Yeah, um. yeah, you'd think they would have a couple samples, but then again, depending upon the size of the bitmap, it might be rather large. Yeah. This and disk again, this is maxed out. Uh, there's uh, All sectors are used on the physical floppy. We're cheating here using a nano, because you can go double side, double density, it doesn't care uh, what size the floppy disk yeah. is. So it's easy with the nano to go through this, but no, this uh, the physical floppy only had so many sectors. Yeah. 
didn't have any spares. GIF 99, 113, SCSI. Well, we can always go to drive three that has my utilities. After this gets done loading, go down to our old buddy, Identifile. Okay, you can catalog a disk. I've already done two, I've configured this. And you can catalog this one, two, or three. Okay, so this catalogs. One thing about Identifile I hadn't noticed when I had my uh, TIM, TI Image Maker, this screen automatically went to 80 column in this window, and I never noticed it. Yeah, it just did it without any fuss or fanfare or anything, and the screen didn't shimmer, I didn't get noise out of the audio, nothing. It just went, oh, 80 column. And no, this doesn't do that. So bacteria doc, BMP, EA load run. Load run. Programs, program, run program, file, DV80, DV80, run program, DV80. Uh, G113 object is at this fixed 80. No, that's all the way to the end of the disk. I don't see any. I'm wondering if it would um, go the other way, if it would turn a, um, um, a, a page pro picture into a BMP. Uh, is BMP a, a dot? Is it on a you know, PC is a dot BMP? Or yeah, yeah. It's well, PC oriented here's... Microsoft Windows use them a lot. I see. Now, disk number two, I've got various uh, pictures in TI readable format. Uh, Barney is an RLE picture. Uh, Bugs Bun underline P is a TI artist picture. Uh, Scout Bear is an RLE picture. So no, I don't think I got any uh... actual BMPs, actual bitmap files. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I've got a ton of them somewhere, but getting them onto a disk is another matter. Yeah, there's a. We were at a uh, show. Mike Maximic and I were at a show in Fort Wayne, uh, coming back from um, <laughs> coming back from Lima, uh, from the Lima <laughs> show, and we stopped off at this uh, at this computer show in uh, Fort Wayne. We saw a sign for. And um, there, there was a fellow there selling, um, oh, they're selling porno, let's be honest about it. And uh, so uh, we stocked up on a, uh, a bunch of pictures and, uh, and um, written stuff and put it up on the um, uh, Cynthia Becker uh, Memorial site, which was a hidden site on the BBS, Chicago TI BBS. So it only looks like it's one way. Yeah. Load a BMP and save it as a TI artist or a PC-99. It doesn't look like it can go the other way. Yeah. I would need a different tool. Well, there's that. that one called PIX Pro, P-I-X hyphen P-R-O. Mm -hmm. And uh, the advantage of that program was you were supposed to convert every graphic you had into PIX format that was smaller. So you used less disk space. And then when you had a program and you knew what graphic you wanted to use, use Pic Pro to uncompress it into any format you wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Now the problem is, is not everyone adopts those th those ideals, especially if you're a commercial entity selling graphic software yeah. and has their own format. Okay, oh, like so everything that's... in the world, once upon a time, this was all cutting edge and uh, and you know spending a little bit of time. Uh, doing some of these conversions and all, uh, if you were using a TI, was no big deal because that's what you did. Uh, it's like driving a car today. We'll look back a hundred years from now and people are teleporting and say, God, what a waste of time to have to drive somewhere when we could just push a button and be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this is cell grow on the uh, disk directory. from uh, far off 1988. It says, push a key. Cue the harp music. <laughs> Drakentos. 
Okay, this does look more like Dutch than It German. is. Okay, the idea of this program, um, Brain Breakers, uh, in, this, <laughs> in, the, in the book, brain, it was published in the book Brain Breakers. Um, those are puzzles, puzzles uh, from Ivan Moskovich. Uh, uh, with the work by Van Hawking and, and Lando. Um, variant of the... Oh, the Variant of Life by, by yeah. Conway. Right, yeah. Well, even I can figure that one yeah. out. All right. Okay, sometimes you get predefined shapes and sometimes you have to draw a shape. Mm -hmm. And the key is what key do you use to move and what key do you use for pen down and pen up? So there's a simple um, spellregel, which is the uh, uh, playing rules. Uh, and, uh, yeah, which, which buttons to press, yeah. Uh, let me know when I should go on. Starting point in the center. I uh, start in the center. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because yeah, we got two versions of life. Yeah. For the TI. Um, well, then I think we probably know how to play this. Yeah, I just want to know what keys to press. Yeah, I, I, sometimes it's like the space bar to leave a mark of space, and then the arrow keys to move around. And let's see, in the, in the first case is uh, generalities and I have my Dutch English dictionary here, but I don't want to spend the rest of the week. Yeah, press another button. Okay. Uh, which which cell would you uh, like to have? Would you like to have blue, or would you like to have uh, black, or would you uh, have them all in uh, in blue? Let's start with number one, just no, go from number the, one, yeah, okay. Start from the top. All right. Well, you should plan, you should plan in advance where you're gonna go. Uh, but if we don't have any particular, uh, any particular plan, just press number two. And, uh, well, one might allow you to draw a shape you want, and two might just randomize it, but yeah. Since two is highlighted, yeah, I'll go with that. Oh, so we can go back here and go to one later. So, okay. So the basic rules of life are: you start out with cells that are alive, and depending upon how many cells are near them, they will either starve to death because there's too many cells near them or if there aren't enough cells near them to help support life, they'll starve to death anyway. Uh, if there's the right number of cells, they'll continue to the next generation. And if there's an even more right number of cells, they will reproduce and you will have more cells on the screen than you started with. Uh, the interesting thing about life is they discovered a whole bunch of shapes that they gave whimsical names to called flyers, where they would progress, appear to progress across the screen. In reality, no individual cell moved. It's just they would reproduce, die, you know, form different shapes uh, in a particular pattern that uh, appeared to be motion. Sounds like life, yeah. Then they had a modified one that would eject little pieces of itself called bombers. And uh, then I think on one of the fair discs I gave away, I had a great PC version of life. 
that was fast. The guy had all sorts of prearranged shapes. Uh, you could just go through the menu on the left side and press enter. And you could zoom in and out on the screen. And it just did all sorts of wonderful things. I think they had one called the conveyor that looked like it would take a, a drop that fell from the top of the screen. It would land on the conveyor and trundle over to one side and drop it off. Mm -hmm. uh, one was like an hourglass that appeared to be filling up. Or the top part, the sands were draining into the bottom. And uh, yeah, they just had all sorts of amazing shapes. It's, it's kind of like the way people have uh, proliferated across the planet. Uh, certain groups have overrun other groups. Um, Homo sapiens overran Neanderthals, although merged with some Neanderthals. <laughs> and then they, then they, um, they moved to different remark. continents. They, they came over here, for instance. Uh, other groups came from uh, Asia mm -hmm. uh, and uh, populated uh, North America, then South America. And other groups went to the uh, Polynesian Islands and uh, uh, formed a society there. And then by, by interbreeding, uh, reinforced certain characteristics, skin color, mm -hmm. uh, face shape, hair color, that type of thing. And so we have the different, uh, different races of people. Um, and uh, at some point or another, <laughs> I guess we're all in the Garden of Eden, or all in Africa, or somewhere. Uh, and uh, I've I've read that at one point, the Homo sapiens population uh, was down to 1,500, uh, something like that. And the, the, the DNA seems to show that there's um, a time when we're all descended from one of those 1,500 people. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting, very interesting how that uh, how that works out. They can uh, yeah. do so much now with DNA that uh, yeah. the uh, Ancient Origins website uh, has a Facebook page I subscribe to, and they get into the out of Africa theory, and they get into various subjects, uh, race, religion, country of national origin, and uh, I can't believe the flame wars <laughs> that go on. Yeah. And uh, I will sarcastically uh, comment occasionally, like, oh, a nice peaceful discussion on ancient origins here. Well, uh, there's there's an awful lot of uh, controversy. Yes, there is. It promotes about discussion. Of, yeah, about a lot of th things. People, mm -hmm. people have um, any idea, no matter how strong it may seem, 100 years after it's introduced, will be opposed from the start. Um, um, Galileo was imprisoned, Galileo. excommunicated for uh, his heliocentric uh, theories, and 100 years later, uh, 70 years later, it was official doctrine. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. The, uh, in the early 60s, uh, comic book writer Stan Lee of Marvel Comics uh, he and uh, other people had come up with a concept called the X-Men, which uh, the format was is during puberty, as kids' bodies are changing, their mutant paranormal abilities would manifest. And in Marvel Comics, any exposure to radiation will cause a mutant paranormal ability. Uh, and this was a big hit because with the kids, because kids are growing up. Their bodies are changing. This can sometimes be frightening. And uh, so uh, he but made him. If you think you're going to get superpowers out of it, you know. Uh, then <laughs> yeah, so bad. I can't tell you how many spiders I let bite me. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but in any case, um, in that, in one of the early issues of the X Men, Professor uh, Xavier is on TV trying to keep people from panicking. And he says, you must not let fear and ignorance uh, stampede you. Even one of your own children might be a mutant. Ooh. And they show this guy in a wife beater drinking his beer at home, watches his TV, goes, none of my kids is a mutie. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> accents my own. No. <laughs> but that was uh, pretty much the idea they were putting across. And, uh, of course, you know how phenomenally successful X-Men have been, and then the movies, 
and everything. Um, Even the lunch boxes, yeah. yeah. Well, some of the congressmen wanted the Mutant Registration Act because they said with these abilities that these kids have, it could be like going to school with a loaded gun. Yeah. And so he had a valid concern about how dangerous he was. Sure. But then uh, he was sort of pissing off people like Magneto, who saw his own parents killed in a Nazi concentration camp because his family was gypsies. Uh, so he's got a bad on against the whole human race now. Yeah, they had, uh, they, and gypsies had uh, their own superpowers. They knew how to play uh, violins and dance and yeah. uh, steal babies. And, uh, and, uh, so with that, uh, uh, Magneto, uh, Eric Langschmer, is his uh, civilian name, uh, saw the resurgent, resurgence of that kind of uh, Nazism and discrimination and everything else, and he didn't like it. So oh, uh, well. Stan Lee made another million off of Professor Xavier going, we can live with the humans. And Magneto going, no, they will never accept us. It's war. So here in two sentences, you've expressed, you know, he's expressed the whole idea of the conflict. He's boiled it down. And so on and so forth. But in any case, uh, yeah, so with this, sometimes I see there's a counter on the screen for how many generations this has gone from one dot in the middle of the screen, we've gone to this symmetrical shape. And uh, uh, sometimes you will wind up with a screen that does not appear to change. That's because the cells just pass on to the next generation without more being born, without any dying, without it changing its shape. That's back in the days of uh, virginity. Uh, there were many, uh, there were many people who, uh, who didn't uh, have children. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm minded of the Bachelor Dons at, North, uh, at Notre Dame or the uh, people who went into uh, religious orders who chose not to uh, procreate. Uh, and even uh, uh, groups uh, in the utopian, uh, some of the utopian uh, communes who uh, like the Shakers uh, who uh, abstained from um, uh, having children, mm -hmm. and as a result, their, uh, their religions died out. Well, they uh, required a constant influx of new members. Right, all the yeah, time. And, it, and it was one of those things where it wasn't terribly appealing once uh, people discovered indoor plumbing and uh, uh, you know, electricity and things like that yeah. uh, to live in a society where uh, you. Uh, you lived a, a rather austere lifestyle. Okay. Uh, well, I tried running number one where I would generate my own shape, and it just seemed to come up with the standard shape right over again. Well, so I'll try reloading it. Go ahead, Hal. No, uh, I'm uh, sorry, I didn't mean to inter no, interrupt no, you. No, I'm just uh, sitting here uh, thinking uh, that uh, life is kind of funny. Um, mm -hmm. And the closer you get to the end of it, the more you realize that there's uh, there's an awful lot of stuff you wish you had done. Yeah. So kids, kids, don't grow old and, and think that you should save all your money until the very end and then pass it on to your kids. Mm -mm. No, go ahead and spend it. Have a good time. Uh, live fast. Die young. Make a good-looking corpse. Uh, make a lot of noise. Yeah. Uh, My favorite uh, bumper sticker is on the back of a huge motor home. Suspending our kids' inheritance. What was it? <laughs> Spending our kids' inheritance. Oh, yeah. 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 They're all learning more now than I did at their age, so. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's go through self grow again. Maybe I read something wrong. So, so uh, we'll have the new cells. Let's see. One. What, what if I'm going to go check and make sure okay. that there isn't anybody coming in after us that needs this room because if we do have to start. Okay, press one or two. I'm going to press one. I clearly see a one on the screen. Press enter. Okay, and it just came up with the same pattern as if I had pressed two.
you know, press two. Yeah, and two, two is the, okay. So there doesn't seem to be any difference in this program between pressing one and two. I was hoping that one would let me draw my own pattern on the screen, but apparently not. And do a list. Now, gee, I'll run this program. Next screen, next screen, press one. And here I'll break the program and see what line we're at. We're on line 320. Okay. Accept, add 17.8, size A, validate one or two. Call clear. Oh, validate one or two and the variable D. Okay, call screen A string. Uh, I ain't smart enough to try to figure this out now. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. Then again, this is a uh, Dutch user group disk from uh, 1988 that I've never run before. For so grow, character at three, copy, CSCSC. Okay, DM2K. This has got to be an early version of Disk Manager 2000. I'm sure you've all seen this before. 1998 by our old buddy Fred Call uh, in the Netherlands. And uh, this is in uh, English language. So function E, file up, X is file down, 8 make a directory, 6 to execute, back, space. Page up, page down, go to subdirectory, input subdirectory, print directory, remove a command, function one or functions or uh, space. Okay, copy file, copy all files, move file, rename file, protect file, type file, help. Copy all files, copy no files, delete file, control three Q. Okay, so how do you catalog it? disk. Well, if I press H, oh, it won't let me do that. Oh, not let me go. Okay, copy, move, and select disk. Copy no files. I better get out of this before I really get messed up. Uh, I never really, sorry Fred, I never really learned how to use uh, DM2000 at the time because uh, uh, if I was working with a hard drive, an MFM hard drive, I was using uh, My Arc Disk Manager 5 and uh, DM1000 or uh, Disk U worked real good for everything I was trying to do. Quick housekeeping note, um, the men's room is out of order and you have to ask for the key, which is on a big white uh, thing at the uh, desk. Uh, it's on this side, it's just on the desk and you pick it up and wave to the young lady who's reading a book or on the phone or uh, hate to interrupt. The uh, other housekeeping note is that there's no one following us immediately at 3 o'clock, mm -hmm. 14 minutes from now, so that we can stay in here until such time as they need the, uh, the room. Um, so if they need the room, though, we have to set a uh, shutdown pretty quickly. So. Okay, so we're going to run boot. And then I'll try a directory of disk one. And we'll go to DM2K README, press V for view, and enter. And oh, this is in English. This is disk manager for the TI or MARC, which can be used to manage your files and devices with a directory structure like a hard disk or SCSI disk.
disk about the programming effort. You know, this is showing all sorts of uh, formatting code, so I wonder if those transliterations would work correctly if you printed them out. Um, I don't know. I would presume this is a... Uh, uh, this is English, but the other stuff we looked at that was in Dutch and or German. Yeah, uh, well, you it, said it had stuff that must be translated. Yeah, they would it would translate translate to the uh, umlauted letters. Mm -hmm. The um, M2K is written optimized for version of Pimpoli C. So C, C99, yeah, Pimpoli's uh, C99 is great. And he had uh, used the RAG, the RAG assembler. That was cool, watching it go line by line and assemble a program. It's from this uh, BM2K LM, BM2K UK, the manual in English. BM2K readly this file, the history. User routine that comes with completely seat compiler. Check if the standard console the routines are loaded. Okay. Okay, so what do we have? We have object files. For fun, we can look at that. I'm just going to skip through stuff. Hmm. That was interesting. Yeah. G113 object. DF80 format. Okay, yeah, it looks like DF80. Every other symbol is a letter B. That's a picture. Your compressed, uh, yeah, your compressed uh, object file. Oh, this is GIF99, this is programs, because you got S first, S last, S load. Okay. MDC at 4 1. Okay, this looks interesting. SCSI. Duster SCSI editor. In, okay. SCSI sector editor. I'm getting enough trouble with just a disk manager, and now you've got to tell me to edit sectors. It's above my pay grade. And this is the study SCSI editor itself. Let's press that and watch the smoke come out of your uh, pipeline. <laughs> well, it didn't seem to run directly off of boot with its own EA routine. So let's try it under uh, RxP. Hey, Rich Gilbertson came out with a new RxP. RxP like 2023. This might be failing because we don't have a SCSI drive hooked up. Catalog disk drive number one again. MDCI 414243. I got no idea what that is. I did print out a catalog. Ah, okay. Oh, this is your SCSI disk manager. SCSI oh, one at the top. SCSI at the top, what number is SCSI? 1, 2, 3, 10, 20. 
Okay. So it looks like you got file. You'll have files on the left, and you can move or copy them or do stuff to put them to the right. All right. Notice how we're in uh, 80 column mode. So let's hear it for the F18, yet another program that it works in 80 column on. I know Funnel Web needed a patch, and there's other stuff. Uh, well, like Boot work in 80 column. All right, I'm going to quit this. Catalog drive, whoops, that. Uh, directory drive one. Be nice if I had an actual listing of. Test CRU, test key. Well, test CRU was important for something. I think it was to determine if a bit was on or off or something on a program. Oh. Okay, 9901 CRU tester. Okay, so if everybody can help us on what this is showing. Hmm. Control external VDP keyboard. Maybe if you type the numbers, this would show whether something is functioning. Well, if I press the enter key, the fifth one down, keyboard enter line, okay. I'll press the space bar, the one above it goes. If I press the equal key. I guess it's showing them whether it's working or not because it's on or off. So keyboard function line is zero. Keyboard shift, left and right shift. Keyboard control. Okay. Input keyboard select bit two. Cassette control one. Audio gate control, magnetic tape output. Oh, wow. Okay, let's uh, check things that I wouldn't think of. Let's quit this. Because the last one on the we list is test viewers. key. Yeah, hey, we got any viewers? Uh, I believe so. We are at four currently. I think we had five before. Oh, good. Let's try test key here. It's not an XP program. So I tried running that in XP and it didn't work. So let's. Okay, this is the one I'm more familiar with. Yeah. I'll press the number one key. There it goes. It tells you what code you're getting back. Alpha lock down, alpha lock up, control, space bar, X, Z, Z. All right, so you can use this to test most of your machine. I'm going to go with the uh, joystick number one, push north, south, west, east, press the fire button. See if joystick, yeah, joystick number two is working. And it can test them both at the same time. And it can detect all your keys. Okay, so this is a nice keyboard tester. You notice a lot of people are really going through keyboards. And uh, there's different manufacturers of these keyboards, and some are good and some are not so good. And I'm sure if you've ever noticed on any videos, my personal computer here has a tan keyboard. And uh, way back in the day, I saw an advertisement for uh, replacement TI keyboards. I think it was a box of 10 at a bargain price. I says, well, there's no way I would ever need 10. I've used half of them. 
mm -hmm. uh, since I bought them. And uh, these keyboards seem to hold up pretty good. For the original ones, they either you press a key and it wouldn't read, or it would read five times, you know, just bounce. Yeah, and bounce, yeah. Give you all that problems. So I, I saw nice. red keyboards one time, and I only saw them once, and uh, they weren't um, something I ever bought or anything, but I, I remember thinking that. Um, that's kind of interesting, red keyboards, and I thought, that's nah, a little garish. I like the... I like the black or the gray. I had heard once about somebody joking about somebody uh, who would be so vain they would have a gold-plated console. <laughs> I thought, well, you could get gold anodizing for the for the trim if you really wanted it. Uh, they got that uh, plastic wrap for cars now. They got that in, like chrome and in gold and. Uh, fluorescent red and you know metallic colors. They got that. Yeah, and, uh, they got that uh, so-called uh, dip painting that sprays on, and it can peel off if you don't like the color. You can change your yeah color something color. like a something like a metallic uh, metallic uh -huh. red or metallic uh, orange or something like that would be kind of cool. Um, I saw a video where somebody was using a TI for music bending, they called it, I think it was called, and, and uh, they were playing playing music on the TI uh, with the key. It wasn't, it wasn't using TI program or anything. They were just using the, uh, the console and had converted it to do some sort of bastardized mm -hmm. thing. Um, Excuse me. I'm going to reset up my machine a little bit here. So I'll hook up the uh, speech module. Recently, people were talking about this uh, Buck Rogers work on your uh, final run with speech. Oh, that's not right. You know, minor problem. Oh, see, I demo time for real. Well, thing is, the speech module is like hanging on the side of the console. The rubber feet are missing, or something. I wrote a program for Micropendium, uh, an article, I should say, for Micropendium about how to fix that. They actually printed it. <laughs> I got the kick out of that. Mm -hmm. Taking some rubber bands and <laughs> using rubber bands to keep the elephant foot into the uh, speech synthesizer. Okay, I'll turn this off, turn it on again. Yeah, yeah, the rubber band trick works good. So try running Buck Rogers here. The thing is, I had this running last night. <laughs> Buck Rogers in the 25th century works, but just Buck Rogers in the 21st century still doesn't, you know, so. Uh, Gil Garrard is uh, alive. He's got a presence on Facebook. It was his birthday last week. Oh. He's like, I think like 82 or something like that. And uh, his fond memories of the show. As long as the paychecks uh, cashed, uh, yeah, well, who wouldn't? I mean, he was working with a couple of good-looking women. Okay, well, here is an example. Ambulance works. And in this one, you've got this ambulance. And you've got these people who... Uh, 
Don't give a damn about you. That yeah, sounds like US 41. And that train grows by a track or by a car every, yeah, every time it comes through. So you just go and you pick up customers. Uh, if they're white, they're in poor health. If they're red, they're dying. And if they're black, they're just about dead. So, and you can pick up two customers per, uh, per trip. I'm not gonna touch that. <laughs> so, okay, so the ambulance works good. Machines hey, and it's probably because the speech synthesizer is not cooperating. Reset the final round. Final round again. Okay. It might be just uh, what was that D? And then F for Buck Rogers has a whole lot going on. And I've had some of these games on the final round. They don't start. You press the reset button. You go back to the title screen. It shows up and it runs just fine. Uh, this is not running fine. We'll give it a chance, you know. It's got to <clears throat> refuel the, uh, the jets and it's got to plan the, uh, the uh, hyperspace jump. And yeah. <laughs> okay. Shifting gears. I'm going to change the uh, compact flash card here. Number two, the one that's called V Mods. Now, anybody who's gotten one of the discs from the fair or in later years the uh, thumb drives is uh, This isn't quite where you gotta uh, Ah, that's more like that. Yeah, sometimes on startup, if uh, something sneezes, you'll get this screen. You're not supposed to get this screen. So during some of the uh, let cool off for a minute. <laughs> yeah, last month. Gene and I bought one of these newfangled Roku TVs. And it, uh, it had talked about how easy it was to set it up. <laughs> Just plug it in and turn it on. Yeah. Well, we did that and not much happened. So going through the instructions, it's like, oh, well, turn it off and turn it on again. And we made a little more progress. And uh, we turned our... Uh, uh, internet router off and on again, and we turned the TV off and on again, and ten times later, we had a complete functioning TV. And it just seemed to me that this was altogether too cumbersome of a process for the average uh, consumer to be expected to go through. So I don't know if you spotted it, but I found a, a video clip on Facebook of the uh, IT squad with a comedy show from England about the guys in the basement of a company that are the IT team and they handle all this kind of stuff. And it showed about 20 clips in a row of them going, 
well, have you tried turning it off and turning it on again? And they just did that continuously. And finally, one guy's phone rang, and he pushes a button, and you hear the guy's problem going, I'm having trouble with my computer, and he pushes another button. And here's a big reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. Well, have you tried turning it off and on again? And it stops. <laughs> and the guy answers, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it had a few responses like that, so he just automated the damn thing. Well, once upon a time, I guess uh, um, a lot of the problems were people just didn't have it plugged in. Uh, or, I mean, look, as a, as a, as a computer technical plugs, I know how many times I have tried something, it hasn't worked, and one of the kids walks in and goes, did, 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 mm -hmm. and everything works, and walks away, doesn't tell me what they've done. Yeah. Uh, John is notorious for that. Well, I remember that time you said, how do you set up an account? He says, well, I can do that in just a few minutes. You said, no, tell me. And he almost could not articulate yeah. what to do because his hands kept straying towards the keyboard because yeah. the reflexes, the muscle memories in there. Yeah. He yeah. knows what to do. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times people don't want, you know, I'm sure Jim has probably set up a pricing schedule so that if someone looks over his shoulder while he's trying to fix their computer or something, it costs them more. And if he hasn't, he should. <laughs> uh, well, or, that's the old joke like in an uh, auto repair garage. Our rate is uh, 50 an hour, you know, 60 if you watch, 75 if you help, yeah. and 110 if it comes in as a basket case. Oh, I saved you the problem. I took it apart for you. Yeah. Or, yeah, 500 if you've worked on it by yourself before, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I know now that if something's not working, I either find a workaround or uh, I don't use it. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, we had a leaking toilet, and the solution to the leaky toilet was take all the water out of it. Uh, it doesn't leak anymore. Of course, you can't use it. Um, but uh, unless you bring your own water, you don't bring in a bucket. <laughs> okay. My wife hates that shit. <laughs> that one file I was trying might be a corrupted file. This looks good. We'll see. Okay. okay, the idea is this is almost like skiing. You want to fly between the towers for points. You can never get that far over that fast. This is, this is a, a neat effect, this a scrolling effect. Uh, I believe this plays the same on various other machines. I think this is one that they had for like the Coleco and, and television stuff like that. That was another one very similar. Uh, Zarkon or I uh, can't remember the name of it. I'm, I'm not a gamer. So. Zardoz. No, that's what is it? <laughs> it's a Sean Connery movie, Zardoz. Uh, Zaxxon. Zaxxon, that was Yeah, good. yeah, that was... Uh, okay, so Buck Rogers works fine. Uh, for whoever that was, it was on the Facebook uh, TI-99ers, uh, one of the six different pages. Uh, there is a version of this program that works cleanly. That first one I was trying must be corrupted, and eventually I'm going to have to go through this card and delete those corrupted files and such. Better you than me. I would, I would definitely just break it. I, I have no, Oops. I have no patience left. I, I, life is too short. I'm too old. <laughs> I just. Oh yeah, this was an interesting one. In one file called Games, they have uh, a whole bunch of them here. 
Truth's Video, Chess Video, Vegas, St. Nick. Uh, a few years ago, you remember when I was having so much trouble. Have you got zero zap on there anywhere? Well, that, that is my <laughs> idea of a good game. <laughs> We've demonstrated <laughs> zero <Yeah>. zap. <laughs> All right, let me get to a different file in my uh, book here. I was noticing uh, Plato on there. Eric yes. Bray has all 510 disks, I think, in the uh, thing on a, um, on a flash drive. And uh, so he uh, gave it to his, I think it was his grandson, yeah. uh, to uh, um, take it, and so he can use it on a PC and uh, take it anywhere with him. And oh. He's got nothing better to do. That's cool. Three minutes. Uh, what is it? Five. Uh, Three. I oh. think. I think there's somebody in behind. Okay, so we got to we got to shut down, boys oh. and girls. All right. Oh. Well, uh, that's it for uh, us uh, this month. Uh, we will see you back here on the first Saturday of next month, hopefully, either here or online. And um, uh, we have to shut down now because we're being told that somebody else wants to use this room. We only had it for the uh, two hours. And we've had Very well. Hours well, fair's fair. Yep, fair's fair. Speaking of the fair, <laughs> I am speaking of the fair, October the 14th. Keep the date. Such your uh, right calendar here in Downtown, I was... Hardware mods on their TI 994A. Yes. I'll leave it going until we actually until I actually tear it down. So if you want to talk about yes, it. Yes, uh, some of the most uh, popular hardware mods are well repairs like keyboard replacement is common. Uh, the second one is uh, going with the uh, F18 VGA. Uh, video card replacement. Uh, people used to. Right. Uh, Didn't, wasn't there also some like uh, multi-grom solutions in console other than like the Ubergrom which was cartridge based? Yeah, people used to uh, put the 32K in the console. In the console. Yeah. That was a popular mod. Uh, this particular console I have here uh, actually has TI Extended Basic in it, and I don't know who installed it or anything about it. It's just I bought this console used, and that's the way it was set up. Okay, I'm going to shut this all down. Yep, that's a good idea. Am I still on here? Mike is still hot. Ah, uh, Mike is still hot, so I can't tell any more dirty jokes. Yeah. Well, uh, boys and girls, come on back and see us next month. Uh, we will uh, hopefully uh, have a slightly longer show next time, but as always, it will be interesting, and uh, God willing, and the quick don't rise, I will be here uh, to entertain you and show you some of the wonderful stuff in the world of TI. And that's it for us. You kill it? Okay. Yeah, I only got about a thousand hours worth of more demonstrations. <laughs> Our resources.